Hi, I'm Lex Albrecht with Prem TV, and this week I'm hosting the Prem Show here in Montreal. That's because um, I haven't quite got my work visa sorted out so that I can host the show with Phil in California. But on the bright side of that, I get to show you what Montreal is like in the early spring. And today I'm going to take you on a really cool ride. We'll go check out the F1 racetrack, we'll go on the UCI World Tour course, we'll ride by the Olympic Stadium, and if we get hungry, we'll stop for some snacks. So I took my mountain bike out for this ride today because, well, stuff can get a little bit melty here at this time of year and you never know what kind of things you have to ride through. So I figured this would be a safe bet. Come on, let's go. Montreal's got a really cool Euro vibe. Actually, the official language in Montreal is French. It's one of the only places in the entire province of Quebec, though, where you can get by pretty easily if you only speak English. Old Montreal is the best place in the city to find some good pavé. This is one of Montreal's most unique architectural buildings. It's Habitat Soissons on set, or 67. So right now we're riding on the Formula One racetrack, which we call Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. It's pretty cool because we can come here and ride our bikes like whenever we want and there's no traffic. And actually in the summertime, the Circuit de Veneuve is where pretty much every single cyclist and their brother's neighbor's dog will come to ride to do intervals or just be with friends after work. So there's quite the ambiance. Next up is our news segment with our DC correspondent Adam Pulford. And actually, Adam's got some real news this week. Well, for cyclists anyways. But while Adam's telling us what the news is, I'm gonna get in a couple of intervals. Gotta make the most of this open track while I can. Take it away, Adam. Climbing up Capitol Hill for the first time since January. Finally getting our hill back. That's pretty cool. I'm digging it. It's pretty awesome. Getting our city back, getting that fence down. Everybody's happy. Yeah, buddy. AP, over and out. This week's featured photo is from Custom Made Everything. Check it out. I actually got totally blown away. I thought that this was a true bike, but it's actually a model bike. The brakes work, the water bottle cages are made out of paper clips, and the scenery is absolutely breathtaking. Actually, the scenery, I'm pretty sure, is for real, but the bike, that's just a model. Share your photo with a Prem TV photo hashtag and you can be featured on next week's show. So now I'm taking you on the Mont Royal, which is the most important climb in the entire city of Montreal. And this is definitely a favorite training spot for cyclists. The Mont Royal is actually part of the UCI World Tour race circuit. And this is also part of the course for the former Women's World Cup race. And fun fact, Phil and I have both raced up the Mont Royal but Phil's not here today, so I automatically win. <laughs> this is probably the only time I'm ever gonna beat Phil in a climb. <laughs> All right, next up, we have the workout of the week from Coach Frank Overton. And I'm gonna take really close notes because that climb is actually like harder than I thought it should have been. All right, here's the workout. Aloha, Preen. Let me give you your training for the week while I ride in one of the most beautiful places I've ever ridden. This is in Kailua, week two. Week two is all about progression from week one. So the same format, just doing more of it. Thursday, zone two. Ride 30 to 60 more minutes in zone two, 70%. Friday, still take the day off, do the hippie stuff, yoga meditation, maybe get more sleep. Saturday, big ride. If you're into power-based training, TSS and kilojoules do more than you did last week, about 10 to 25% more. Sunday, still gonna ride zone two, a little bit more. All part of that mitochondrial biogenesis, periodization and progression. Monday, you're still gonna take the day off. It's very important to rest. Uh, get a good night's sleep, win in the kitchen, kick ass at, at work and family. Set yourself up for your intervals on Tuesday because you're gonna do threshold intervals. Bam, full gas, make it hurt. And then on Wednesday, sweet spot intervals, more or less the same workout as you did last week, but three by eight, 84 to 97%, one, one and a half hours. 
All right, that's all your training for week two. I'll see you for week three. Thanks, Prem. Next up is a member ride of the week. This week we picked Rosie Comp from Brazil, who went mountain biking with her friend Juliana and scooped up seven Strava segment top tens. The biggest prize though is that it looked like a fun ride, because those smiles don't look fake. Sign up to Prem's Strava Club and your ride can be featured next week. You guys know what didn't exist back when European settlers were building these buildings in the 16 and 1700s? Memes. Congratulations to last week's winner of Meme of the Week. Let's take a look at this week's Meme of the Week candidates. Take it away, Thrill House. Hello and welcome to the Thrill Meme Review. I'm your host, Thrill of Thrill House Cycling, here to tell you about the hottest memes of the past week and the hottest new meme accounts that you should be uh, following. Okay, let's get on to our first meme of the week from the group Beto. And this is the Nintendo 64 GoldenEye professional cycling mashup that we didn't think we needed, but uh, we definitely do need. So yeah, here she appears to have just a very low polygon chin, uh, which makes him incredibly handsome, but also makes him look as if he could be, uh, you know, in the facility level from GoldenEye 64. Okay, on to our second meme of the week from High Impact Cycling Memes. This is a brand new meme format, and I especially love this because it makes reference to uh, the 1999 smash hit film, The Mummy, starring Brendan Fraser. But yeah, I am. Uh, I would definitely join this team. Woo! Sign me up, you're gonna get strong. Our third meme of the week is important, or maybe not important, because it's the first meme memed about Thrill House Cycling. From Boys on the Hoods, you know, an ultra long distance uh, bike racing team where apparently Professor Frank is the coach. I think that might be ill-advised. And they're riding child's bicycles. All right, onto our fourth and final meme of the week from Women Cycling's meme, which this is far and away one of my favorite new accounts. Go give them a follow right now. This is a feel good meme and uh, that is a pretty underexplored genre in the memosphere. So, uh, okay, so cyclists, you take a day off or a week off, that might as well be 15 years. This is a good reminder, we need rest, we need time off the bike. And I love this quote here, time off the bike is okay, you are valid as a cyclist. Okay, so those are your memes of the week. Go give them a vote over on my page. Okay, folks, that's it for the week. Thanks for joining in, and uh, I will see you when I see you or when I um, don't see you. I gotta get better at these sign-offs. Those are some really good options. Don't forget to vote for your favorite meme at Thrill House Cycling on Instagram. From the top of the Moa, we actually have a really good view of the city. Like we can see the St. Lawrence River, the port, we can see downtown, we can see La Ronde, which is the Six Flags amusement park, the Pont Jacques Cartier, which is a really cool looking bridge that crosses over the St. Lawrence River. And in the distance, we can see the Olympic Stadium. That would be cool to check out. Come on, let's go. This actually used to be a velodrome, but now it's called the Biodome, and there are things like penguins and plants in there. And to my left, we have the Olympic Stadium where the 1976 Olympic Games were held in Montreal. Today, it's home to like many Canadian national sports teams like the synchronized swimming team and the judo team, which is really cool. And there's a lot of really neat sports science stuff that goes on in there. And it's got one of the most beautiful indoor pools in the world. This is actually one of the Olympic venues that is the most actively used post games too, which is kind of cool. I love coming to the Olympic Stadium. It's a cool spot. In fact, this week's interview guest is an Olympian. Allison Tetrick caught up with Amber Neven. I've been looking forward to this one. Take it away, Allison. Amber, welcome to Prime TV. Hey, Allison. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. As you were training uh, into Olympics, um, with all bets going that you get selected, what does your day-to-day -day training and approach look like these days? That's an awesome question. Yeah. So really you work backwards from the key event, right? So the Olympics being in July is when I want to be on form peaking performance wise. Um, so working backwards, that meant after my season, it was really important to take a pretty big break. So with COVID, what ended up happening was it, the Olympics got moved. Everything got you know, it was just chaotic, right? With schedule and everything. So I stayed super focused with preparation and training, but because the Olympics got moved, we ended up being able to hold a really high CTL for pretty much all season, which then, okay. yeah. Can yeah. you um, tell us what CTL is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. So 
We're not all data dorks. I know. Well. And, and not, that's right. where you stopped me because just, uh, I got to remember. Um, so I held a really high chronic training load. So essentially like my, my total volume and workload and training stress, we kept it really high through the year, which would sort of create this really great stimulus for the next year when we unload a little bit and try to be on point in July. But after the season, that meant I had to take two months off. So I took, took about two months off. Um, came back sort of slow and I'm, I've been on a pretty, um, focused, but slow progression just to kind of hold back a little bit. Um, I've been doing a lot of aerobic work, a lot of tempo work right now, mixing in some short intensity, just with the lack of racing last year, we wanted to make sure we brought that in earlier than normal. Um, so mixing in some short, hard, sharp efforts for people like you and I, who are diesels, that's yeah. always, <laughs> that's always fun. Um, yeah, so, so doing that kind of stuff. Um, moving forward, um, well, the other thing that's going on right now is just dialing in the aerodynamics. So part of the preparation for the time trial, you know, it's so much like Formula One now. It used to be where you could be super strong and that was it. Now you have to be super strong and on point with the aerodynamics. So we've been working on a lot on just, you know, saving every bit we can from a a drag standpoint from the aerodynamic standpoint. So working on that, starting to discuss um, some strategies with regards to the next 18, 19 weeks of training. Um, somewhere along the way in there, what's gonna be really important is heat preparation. So Tokyo will be really, really hot and humid. So thankfully I've had some experience with doing heat protocols going into nationals in the Midwest, but also Doha, Qatar, my last world championship was like, it was 106 degrees. So having, oh, wait, you won that world championship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So yeah. we're talking, I mean, for those listening, we're talking the UCI world championships and the time trial. This is our champion in Doha. Okay. Sorry. Clarifying. Yeah. Sorry. You're very humble. It's okay. <laughs> I, that's good. Cause I, I mean, you know, I don't assume anybody knows anything. Um, it's relative, right? So what I do is relative to the gifts I've been given, but hopefully I can inspire people to, you know, use what they have. With the pandemic, we're hoping is is kind of teetering down, but you know people still need to be conscious. So when do you actually expect to be racing again? Um, you know, I don't think anything is really going to kick off in America until the summer. So probably dabble a little bit in the U.S. in the summer prior to traveling over. Um, to be determined on if I go to Europe to do a couple weeks of racing over there. Really, it's going to come down to like a cost benefit risk <laughs> assessment. Um, is it worth it to travel to be over? Um, you know, if I had complete control over the situation and the environment I was going to be in from the bubble standpoint, it's one thing, but it's, it's a, it's a small team and I'm not a hundred percent sure with, you know, resources available and that sort of thing. So I really have to think through things, but either way, um, yeah, we'll make a good plan. And with training, we'll, we'll either you know, use the racing in the training or have to supplement the racing with different training. Amber and I were teammates several times for the U.S. national team. We've definitely had a history and you have been a rock in my career and an inspiration and a mentor for me and so many other people. And that's why I wanted to bring you onto the show because you have this steady, patient, positive energy that always shows up. Uh, so, my question is, what's the key to your longevity in the sport? We're spanning into four decades. And also, what is your key to stay motivated? And then one additional question is, where do you find all that grace and patience? Okay, so three really good questions. Um, remind me if I get off track. So starting with longevity. Uh, yeah, I'm old or not. <laughs> But I would say, you know, it just, it starts with the fact that I've been blessed. I think God's given me an amazing opportunity. So, you know, I have a secret power source in, in that. Um, second, I would say, you know, I've learned a lot over the years. Um, but my longevity probably started about 20, 25 years ago when I really started to take care of my nutrition. I remember being in Europe and I think I was one of the first people to really be searching out vegetables. As crazy as that sounds, I was the one after the races that was cooking my own vegetables, um, cooking my own protein sources, really trying to eat well to supplement the the boring race food. 
Um, so I think quality nutrition way back. I also learned to listen to my body. So one of the things I learned as a distance runner with all the injuries I had was learning to listen to the whispers. So I always say your body whispers to you first. And if you listen to the whispers and take care of those, you can actually keep yourself pretty ha healthy. If you don't, it's going to talk. And if you don't, it starts screaming at you. And if you wait till it's screaming, that's it. You're on the bench, right? But I, I learned to take care of my body and listen. And I found some really amazing people to help me untangle my messes. Um, you know, you crash enough and break enough and, and experience enough um, training, you know, you do damage to yourself. So I've been blessed to be surrounded with some pretty cool people that have helped me learn how to understand just the integration of the body and how connected we are in like potentially a problem I have with my hip or my glutes is it's in my diaphragm or it's in my ankle or it's in my mm -hmm. neck, you know, or it's, it's just, it's not necessarily where you think it might be. So um, I have some really cool people I work with in that sense. Yeah. Perfect. Well, um, Amber, thank you for joining Cream TV today. We hope to have you on a show on Alley on the Field soon, I think. Like, I think I need to come down and train with you. You might promptly drop me. We got to do it. You got to come down. Well, thank you, Amber, for being a champion, world champion, hopefully Olympic champion on and off the bike, um, as always. So Cream TV, thanks you. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, Amber. Let's keep riding. All right, I'm hungry. Let's go get something to eat. Okay, let's go get some poutine. Right now we are at La Banquise, which is known to be the best place for poutine in all of Montreal. Let's see. So I got a little hungry, so I thought we'd stop for some poutine. This is pretty typical. We have french fries, gravy, and cheese curds. Actually, to tell you the truth, I don't really like poutine that much, but I just wanted to show you guys what a real, live, genuine poutine looks like. But this could actually make for a good Preem TV photo of the week shot. All right, I guess I could try a little bit of this. Not bad. I like coffee better. I'm gonna leave you guys with some Euro goodness. This week is the Côte de la Madeleine, courtesy of the Cult Collective. Have a good ride.